I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Simon Dennis, the cinematographer behind Candy on Hulu and also Impeachment American Crime Story on FX. Uh, first thing I want to ask is what went into capturing the look of the late 1990s in Washington, D.C.? Uh, research was the first thing, you know, it's, it's a four year story. So we, we kind of spent a lot of time kind of researching and mapping out. We did, we had like a giant sort of time map of the entire event, which as I say, spanned four years. So we started with that. And then the second thing was we were shooting LA for DC for most of the shooting, apart from obvious key kind of what eventually be, became like helicopter establishing shots of DC, you know, that the whole city area. Um, so it was a case of like careful scouting and uh, careful exterior planning. And then beyond that, I, I do a lot of live color on set, which on this instance was really helpful because it meant we could shift the palette a little bit closer to like a signpost towards that era. Of course, DC has been a little bit bastardized in movies and TV. Everyone associated with, with being kind of extremely blue, you know, movie movie traffic being one. Um, we didn't really want to go down that route. We, I saw it in my head as a, obviously like a colder sort of palette, but more like a silver kind of gray. Um, but also, you know, it does ride, you know, all seasons so even in the oval office well which was a soundstage build we were riding different times so we would sometimes be in a summer uh, summer scene as well as a um what ultimately would be a kind of cooler winter kind of um period so yeah and then of course you know everything was based around careful palette choice with uh, jamie mccall the production designer and the costume designer as well and hair and makeup so it was all a, a giant kind of group effort you know actually you know it, uh, being someone who lives right near dc I'm, I'm curious as to do you think that that's also because of the uh the way that dc is structured particularly with its architecture a lot of it is concrete and also it doesn't have skyscrapers uh like right. in other cities so there's not as much per so it, and looking at it there's not as much personality to a lot of those built right i actually yeah but the part of the research we found out and you you will know this is DC has a cap on its its um, elevation, as it were, of buildings. So it's the Washington I, Monument, yeah. Yeah, I can't I can't remember how many stories you're you're technically allowed to go up to, but ten or twelve. Ten or twelve, yeah. And as you say, yeah, it sort of it, it lets other key kind of um, government kind of um, iconography to sort of stand out for us. Um, yeah, I I I kind of. Uh, I think, you know, the, the, a lot of this is kind of interiors and, you know, it's, you know, the first reference that came from Ryan Murphy was All the President's Men, which obviously is a, a classic staple DC movie. But we loved it also because it has a, uh, you know, it's the corridors of power and you have a lot of kind of like, it's it's all dialogue based, you, you know, basically that the threat is within dialogue and, and kind of loose lips sink ships and all that kind of stuff. and. We knew that that was a big kind of part of the storytelling, and, and Ryan also wanted to kind of make it feel a little bit more like a thriller, but a not a straight-on thriller. You wanted to feel that kind of sense of gloom in places, which I sort of was like, yes, a, a gloomy look. I think is apt. Obviously, you got the brighter areas of the LA Times, which is kind of like the Washington DC, the DC, sorry, Washington Post. So bright, like very, very bright sort of spaces, but also very kind of moodier interior spaces like um, Linda's apartment and Monica's to, in places. Um, but we, I kind of came back to Ryan and the team saying, well, we can do gloom, but I kind of wondering if we go more of a glam gloom kind of look, which was a, is to sort of like keep things a little bit rich and a little bit more accessible, uh, especially when you have two key female leads. So uh, this actually goes into what I wanted to ask next, which is about the methods um, you use to capture the distinctive the distinctive look of different settings. Mm -hmm. um, what so what methods? Uh, for instance, like uh, the White House, which has a bit more of a warm uh, aesthetic to it, as opposed yeah. to the Pentagon, which is a much more um, uh, drone like um, mm -hmm. yep. uh, mindset there. 
And I'm curious as to uh, how, what methods you use to capture those differences. Well, um, circling back to Jamie Designer, so we, we um, you know, the, the 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 White House is pretty much it's it's a it's a it's Ryan's you know vision of the White House, which is obviously a little bit more I see it warmer tones. It's like oatmeal. And um, a lot more kind of warmer practicals, a little bit more cozy, especially the back uh, back study where a lot of the affair took place. Um, but yeah, when you get to the Pentagon, as you say, it's drone like. I kind of pictured it more like you know the theory of the casino. So there's, there's there is wind. There's kind of there's no clocks on display. Um, there is windows, but you feel like you're trapped. You feel like you kind of frost. You it kind of it's like a lot of frosting techniques on the windows, so you can't you can't really see out. So we love that idea of, um, I think most of the show actually plays on this sort of feeling of, you know, entrapment and feeling, you know, even Monica's apartment, which is a sort of a, a government issue apartment in the Watergate, <clears throat> which was based on the real Watergate complex, which is a cylindrical building. And you do have a view, but it sort of feels like you're sort of in trapped as well. Like there's a sort of bar system um, so there's there's a lot of um, kind of methods and iconography within a the production design of course which was so integral, and b the, the final cho choice of the palette which was again, you know it's not to say I mean in the script <laughs> the Pentagon was described as a fluorescent hell, um, and initially you could say oh we could go down to a little bit more of a vibrant like maybe a slightly cool green feel. <clears throat> but because we were dealing with a lot of skin tones and, as I say, like female characters, uh, we ended up kind of going for a fluorescent look, but it was more of a sort of a, like I said earlier, like more of a grey fluorescent, um, which in tune worked with the kind of, it, it didn't kind of fight the, the palette that was, you know, present uh, given to us. So uh, you also, uh, you actually uh, used one of those words uh, uh, that I was wanted to ask about, uh, that, that, uh, that feeling of entrapment. And there are so many scenes where you feel this sense of like claustrophobia or mm -hmm. you really feel the sense of like that being entrapped. I think, and especially a lot with Monica, like when she's mm -hmm. uh, being, uh, uh, I don't want to say necessarily accosted, but uh, in, uh, entrapped by the people from the special counsel's office. And then yeah. also when she has to stay in her apartment because of the press outside. And I'm curious, and I was wondering, how do you use cinematography to be able to capture that claustrophobia that feels so prevalent throughout the series? Mm, yeah, uh, it's it's part, part, partly, well, largely, I think it's, uh, we did a technique where we would, and this is common with uh, cinematographers, but we would ND the windows down in any of the locations that any of this story was taking place to the point where, Obviously, it gives you much more an exposure of an outside world, but it also feels a little bit more kind of um, uh, sort of more down and, and kind of restrictive in a way. And then you've got obviously, you know, uh, window treatment like slats or, or kind of heavy blinds or shears. And th this is something that I work with a lot on the production, production side of it to kind of, you know, make sure we're on the same page. So I definitely wanted it to feel like a, more like a hibernation in like tone than a um than like normally you would let the windows go extremely bright and make the interior go more moody but i kind of felt like even the windows should feel like you're, you're being trapped you know it feels like um it's sort of um yeah giving you a more of a sense of um mood uh that that can sort of, you know, on the Ritz Carlton as well, which is an interesting one because that's a key, there's a key episode which is almost like a, a bottle episode where uh, she's basically being questioned by the FBI. And again, you, you have the, the big bank of windows, but you never really get any detail of what's out there. It's a bit more abstract. And, and in a funny way, it can feel a little bit more kind of like a, a bad dream, you know? Uh, so one of the other things that I think is so interesting about this is that um, for a lot of this, even though it is very thrilling to watch, it is capturing a lot of mundane activity, like just, you know, Linda Tripp recording these conversations or, you know, her work at the Pentagon mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, just, you know, people going through documents and things like that. How are you able to uh, use cinematography to make what would usually be considered boring and mundane to be exciting? 
Uh, that's a good question. Actually, a lot of a lot of the things you see, including Linda's little kind of tropes of you know baking a potato in a microwave, which on paper sounds incredibly boring, but actually I think Ryan was really really interested in finding the 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 you know taking the mundane and making it quite extraordinary in a very mundane if that makes sense it, to actually feed off that and like you said earlier the drone like thing of <clears throat> there's a thing where you've constantly feel like you, there's no sense of time and wherever she is at and there's a lot of stuff that includes uh, tv work where we had like a lot of uh, lighting work that came out of the tv which is a big character in the show so that even that was sort of sucking the life out of of uh, of Linda every time she and and you know that's that was another light illumination in the piece and became a, a lot more about um, a the use of media and and b obviously as everyone knows it's like you know the spirit crushing sense of a television glowing in the darkness that that's another kind of interesting kind of mundane image but I find it really fascinating so yeah every everything that you see down to uh, you know the tape recordings of course were very integral and we worked. With no hand doubles, um, Sarah Paulson was, integ you know, insistent that she was a part of that because it's it, so many of these small details uh, that seemingly are mundane are, are kind of controlled, and I, I, Ryan really wants to feed off that. So I'm curious as to what was the most challenging uh, scene uh, to shoot for this series, and why was it so challenging? I think the near the end of the shoot and we knew it was coming was um, the big testimonial um, the, where um, where Monica grand goes in and secondly Linda the grand jury the grand jury yeah <clears throat> the, the, anything that's to do with anything like courtroom based language is uh, until you get into a space you think you're going to find all you know it, it sort of restricts you in a certain way because uh, there's so many tropes to come with that kind of language, but ultimately we ended up using a couple of devices. One of them was a lot of perspective driven shots. And, and secondly, we used a split diopter, which was used on the, all the president's men, but we ended up using it in a, a little bit more of a stylized way where you would shoot wide open with the lens and it would create this unusual blur, like, m like macro micro, micro sort of, uh, it's almost like a giant, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, sorry, I've gone blank. Uh, microscope, you know, like you're, it's like you're bearing down onto this character. But that was the general ch challenge with anything court based is obviously there's so much information you have to get, and the way you have to shoot it needs to be respectful to the actor. So you can't, in, in, in some ways, block shoot out if anyone knows what that means, which is kind of covering everything in one direction. You have to almost go in a circle around the room, get all of the, the necessary pieces and then start again. And, and so you can imagine it's it's you can't kind of um, you can't cheat in that kind of environment. It's it's a very, um, you know, I just did it again on Candy. Actually, Candy had the same thing and it was the same. I felt like I was back in the courtroom hell. But ultimately, if you can make the perspective of the camera work sit on the line or be perspective, to the moral story as in like Linda's point of view and, and Monica's, then you'd be more faithful to the, to the, to the final thing. But what I'm getting at, I guess, is there's so much content in that space to get in order to kind of make it cut together in a very tense way. Well, uh, Simon, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best over this award season. And to all our viewers, please like this video, comment, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions. Thanks so much, Simon. Thank you very much, Charlie.